In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear brakes, pads, and rotors on this Lincoln Navigator. These will be located behind your rear wheels. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're in a safe area. Safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. Once you've done that, remove your center cover and each of your five 21 millimeter lug nuts. Now that we have that out of the way, you have a clear view of your rear brakes. We're going to be paying attention to the caliper. On the caliper, you'll find that you have one piston that we're going to need to have to push in just a little bit. To do that, I'll use a small pry bar, pry in this area, pushing in the piston. Now we can move along to the back side of the caliper. You're going to find that you have two 10 millimeter slider bolts holding the caliper in place. Remove the pair. Inspect your hardware as you remove it, replace it as necessary. Now we can take hold of that caliper. We're going to start pulling the top away first, rolling it away, then we can lift it up a little bit to remove it from the area. Continue on with your small pry bar. We're going to remove the outer pad first and then the inner. Once we've done that, we'll inspect our caliper. Let's pry this out of place. You can see you had two ears on the outer pad. And you also have two little nubs that stick out from the pad itself that fit into the corresponding holes in the caliper ears. Continue on to removing the inner pad. To do that, we'll grab onto it, pull it towards the two ears here to separate it from the piston. Looking along the back side of that inner pad, you're going to find that you have three ears that protrude out. They go into the center of the caliper piston. The next thing that we'll want to do is continue pushing in our piston as far as we can go. To do that, we'll use this tool right here, compress that piston in. Once you have that pushed in, just double check for fluid around the area. Assuming that looks good, we'll move along to our sliders. To remove the slider pins, typically you can grab onto them and try to push them out. If you can't, carefully push up against the metal aspect of the pin while gripping onto the metal aspect of the caliper itself, pressing them out of the rubber boot. Once you have the pin out of there, give it a quick inspection. We're going to want to clean this up so we can make sure that it doesn't look like it's rotted or damaged in any way. Now that I have this cleaned up, we're going to pay special attention to the entire shaft of it. And also at each end, you'll find that you have a groove. Make sure it doesn't look like it's rotted or damaged in any way. If you have any rot on these grooves, it's going to make it so moisture can make its way in here and seize this up so it won't be able to function properly. Assuming it looks good, do the exact same thing to the other slider pin. Once you have both of those cleaned and inspected, move along to each of your caliper slider boots. We're going to want to make sure that these are still soft and pliable, and they're not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. If they are, you're going to have to replace them. Assuming they look okay, continue on cleaning out the inside. For this, we'll use a clean rag. Give it a quick twist and slide it right on through. Now once you have that through there, we'll continue on to rubbing it around on the inside of the boot, trying to remove any of the existing grease or debris from inside the area. Another quick check, do the same to the other slider boot. Continue on with some high temperature caliper lubricant. We're going to go inside of the caliper slider boot area, especially inside this center area. 
That's the part that's going to be gripping the most up against the slider pin itself. Get it all in there. Make sure it's well lubricated. Now we'll just put a little bit on the tip of the slider pin here. We don't have to coat too much of the slider pin because we did just add grease all inside of this area. Press that right through. Make sure it functions smoothly and it's not stiff in any way. If you have a hard time pushing this, you're going to have a breaking issue. Do the same to the other slider pin. Now we'll continue on with some more of that high temperature caliper lubricant. Apply some directly to the metal aspect of the caliper piston. Now we'll continue on with our inner brake pad. That's the one with the three ears coming across here. Now when we go to do this, you'll find in your kit you have two of these inner pads. On each side of those pads, you'll find that they're a little bit different. So what you want to do is make sure you have the proper pad. Assuming this was inside the vehicle, you want to make sure that when you put the caliper on, the area with the two ears is facing down. So we can put this on and then roll the caliper on along the top area. Let's put this pad in position, aligning those three ears with the center of the piston and press it into position. Continue on to the back side of each of these two ears, being extremely careful not to get any grease on your brake pad. Time for the outer pad. Once again, we're paying attention to each of those two ears, making sure that they align properly. Slide it into position, listen for a click, and make sure it's secure on both sides. You can tell I have the side of the pads with the two ears on the same area, so they'll be facing down. Now we can set the caliper aside and remove our brake rotor. The next thing that we'll want to do is remove our brake rotor from the area. For this, we'll just grab onto it, give it a little wiggle, and remove it. Now that we have the rotor out of the way, let's continue on in the area where the caliper is supposed to sit. You'll find that you have a tin up on this area, and then the same down along the bottom. Remove the pair. You're going to want to make sure that you clean up this area, all the way along this, along here, and along the back side on each of these ears. Once we have both of those cleaned up, we'll continue on to the hub mating surface here. This is where the brand new rotor is going to sit. Use a wire brush in between these lug studs and the hub. Now that we have that cleaned, let's pay attention to our emergency brake shoes or parking brake shoes. You want to make sure it doesn't look like they're worn very low or damaged in any way. If it does, that means it's time to replace them. Commonly, it's a good idea to make sure that you replace the hardware at the same time. You also want to pay attention behind this area. If you see any fluid, it's more than likely an axle seal leak, in which case you want to make sure you take care of that as well. Assuming it looks good, move along. Let's use a little bit of high temperature caliper lubricant along each of these ears. In your kit, you'll find that it came with four of these, two for each side of the vehicle. Line them up in place and press them into position. Make sure it's completely secured. Now we'll continue on with some copper anti-seize along the hub mating surface where the brand new rotor will sit. Now, before we put on the brand new rotor, let's have a look down in the lower area of the shoes. You'll find that you have a retraction spring coming across here, and just above it, you have a little cog that's part of the adjustment for the parking brake shoes. To adjust this, you'd want to make sure that you make your way from the back side of the backing plate. There's a small hole, and you can go directly up against this cog. You would just use your pry bar or small adjusting tool and turn that cog. 
To adjust the shoes out, you're going to turn it one way, and to bring them in, you're going to turn it the opposite way. It's important to make sure you have the proper adjustment in this area. Now it's time to clean our brand new brake rotor. The areas that you want to pay attention to are all three of your braking surfaces. You'll find that you have one braking surface along the outside, and then two along the inside. One here, and one inside this drum area for those parking brake shoes. Let's take that rotor and put it in position. Before we continue putting on our caliper with those brake pads, let's make the adjustment of our e-brake shoes. What we're looking for here is that this can still move a little bit. The way that we're going to adjust this is by making our way to the back of the backing plate and adjusting those shoes out until we have no movement from this area. So if I try to grab onto it, it just won't spin at all. At that point, we'll de-adjust it just a little bit so we can move this without having any drag make our way to the backing plate with our small prying device and remove our protective cover. We'll give this a quick inspection, set it aside because you will be reusing it. All right, so right there, it stops the rotor. I'll go ahead and de-adjust this a couple turns. Make sure you have movement from that rotor and minimal drag. Drag will create heat and that'll cause those shoes to expand. Once you've made your adjustment, make sure you put in your protective boot. Now we're at the point we can reinstall our caliper. When we do this, we're going to come down diagonally, starting in with the lower aspect, making sure that the ears are sitting perfectly and then roll it into position. If it doesn't seem like it wants to slide in, typically it's due to the fact that your caliper slider pins need to be pushed towards the center of the vehicle a little bit. Continue on with your two caliper slider bolts. Start these in, snug them up, torque them to 20 foot-pounds. Now before we put the wheel up on here, just double check everything to make sure it's seated properly. Put your wheel in place. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts, bottom them out, and get the wheel back on the ground, then we'll torque these to 150 foot-pounds. Now with the wheel back on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. If you have a center cover, go ahead and put that on now. Looking at the back side, you'll find that you have five holes. Each of those lines up with your lug nuts. Once it's in place, drive it in. Okay friends, we showed you how to do one side of your rear brakes. The process will be the exact same thing for the other side of the vehicle. Once you've done that, go ahead and pump up that brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Double check your master cylinder to make sure it's full and then take it for a road test. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.